Hello, my name is Martin Baxter. I am Executive Director responsible for policy at the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment and I'm also leading the UK's input into the revision of the International Environmental Management System standard ISO 14001. The new standard introduces some quite significant changes um, for current users uh, and I'll, and I'll summarise those as, as we go through this um, session now. The first thing is that the new standard operates against the new higher level structure for management system standards that ISO has introduced and that will fundamentally change the whole structure and the way in which the requirements are expressed compared to the existing standard. You will be able to familiarise yourself with those changes um, by looking at what ISO has already drafted um, in its high level structure, but those changes are quite significant. The new changes introduce some requirements on top management that aren't already in the, in the existing standard, together with new language around risks and opportunities, compliance obligations. And overall, I think what people will see is that there's much more emphasis on environmental performance improvement being the core deliverable of ISO 14001. The new requirements are split into a whole series of clauses, um, so there are many more clauses than in, in the existing standard, and I'll go through those now. So, there is a new section on strategic context that's looking at both the external and internal drivers that will affect the way in which the organisation needs to think about putting its EMS together. Those might include customer requirements, it might include political situation, the views of regulators or changes in regulatory requirements. Crucially as well though, one of the big changes that's coming in ISO 14001 is that whereas in the existing standard organisations are managing their impact on the environment, the new standard looks at also the way in which the external environment will impact on the organisation. So that's a big significant difference and will bring into play issues like, like adapting to climate change and resource security and availability of materials. So those are some quite big changes which are coming through. There are a whole new set of requirements on top management and there is a new definition of top management. That definition um, relates to those who are either control the organisation either as an individual or as a group. So that could include the directors or the chief exec. While there is a note that explains that top management might delegate authority for certain things, there is a ring fence around top management delegating um, responsibility for setting policy, for allocating roles and responsibilities, and for management review. And there'll be no hiding place from top management for that. Other new requirements relating to leadership and top management include requirements to consider environmental performance in the organisation's overall strategic planning. And crucially, there is a requirement that the organisation must implement its environmental management system requirements into core business processes. So if your EMS is something that sits on the side of the organisation and is maybe a peripheral issue, then that won't meet the new requirements. It has to be integrated into the organisation's core business processes. There are some new requirements on policy commitments. And whereas the existing language talks about prevention of pollution, the new standard will be looking at issues around environmental protection as well. Within that, consideration needs to be given to things like adapting to climate change and climate change mitigation, protection of ecosystems and biodiversity, sustainable use of natural resources. So this is a much more expansive view of um, environmental management that is currently um, articulated in the current standard. One of the biggest changes in the new standard is a new section on risks and opportunities. This brings together both the existing identification and evaluation of environmental aspects, which is largely the same, although there's a requirement to develop uh, criteria against which you will evaluate your environmental aspects. But crucially as well, there is also the need to evaluate risks and opportunities on the organisation from its environmental aspects and from external environmental conditions that might impact on your organisation. So that could include issues such as climate change and the ability of your organisation to respond to that, or it could include issues around um, the availability of resources and resource security is a big and growing concern. The outcome of all of that is 
an understanding of where the, the organisation wants to either make improvements or control. And these are, there are some new important requirements that have been introduced around the whole issue of value chain planning. So if your organisation is evaluating its environmental aspects, there's a new requirement now to consider a life cycle perspective and within that life cycle perspective to look much broader than just operational footprints of environmental aspects and impacts. So this is a much more expansive standard um, in terms of environmental measurement and will subsequently have impacts on the way in which you manage um, your procurement and supply chain issues as well as integrate environmental issues into um, design and change management programs. The new standard introduces new requirements on communication and whereas communication in the current standard, particularly externally, is a matter for the organisation, there is much more, um, there is more specific requirements introduced on management of data and information, particularly when it's being used for external purposes against which decisions are made. Many of you will have environmental permits with, that require you to report on certain aspects of your environmental performance and there is new requirements on the way in which you manage your data and information and evaluate that before it is released either to regulators or other third parties who are going to use that information for different purposes. There's a new section now on value chain planning and control which requires you to consider and introduce requirements on suppliers and contractors as appropriate if they relate to environmental aspects which you can influence um, in different parts of your value chain. So this is a new requirement that requires organisations to be far more expansive about how they take and view environmental performance and the way in which they can generate improvements. The existing standard talks about legal requirements and other requirements to which the organisation subscribes. This has been uh, replaced by a new term which is about compliance obligations. So compliance obligations do include those legal requirements which you have to meet, so that's environmental laws and regulations, permit conditions, but equally there might be other things which you have to comply with. They could be corporate policies, and procedures, they could be customer requirements, but equally you might voluntarily subscribe to other codes of practice or schemes or different ways of expressing performance requirements that relate to your organisation. All of those are now covered by this new term compliance obligations. There is a new requirement that's been introduced relating to the evaluation of compliance. One of the key changes here is that the organisation needs to know and understand its compliance status. So this is a change from the existing standard and will require organisations to be much clearer about the internal metrics that they use to evaluate performance and to make sure that they're evaluating their compliance performance on an ongoing basis such that it's not for the regulators or external certifiers to be identifying where they have breaches but the management system itself is flagging up where there are areas of concern. In terms of the language around compliance obligations, the new standard uses compliance obligations, whereas the existing standard talks about legal and other requirements to which the organisation subscribes. So compliance obligations includes legal requirements that are specified in laws and regulations and also in permits. But equally, there might be other areas which the organisation is in control of whether it does something or not, but chooses to address within its environmental management system and, and adopts them as things it's going to deliver. That might include customer requirements that are listed. Uh, that might include customer requirements which are listed in uh, contracts. It might include investor or shareholder concerns. It might include codes of practice could include external schemes like use of forestry stewardship, uh, council timber. So there are a range of compliance obligations which the organisation needs to consider, some of which are legally required and others which it voluntarily commits to. But once it has voluntarily committed it, it must implement them within the environmental management system. The final section of the new standard uh, relates to continual improvement. And there is far more emphasis now in the current draft of 14001 
that relates to environmental performance improvement. So organisations will have to be able to demonstrate that they are improving the environment, not just implementing a, a management system which is getting better, but doesn't necessarily deliver a better environment. The timetable for the new standard being adopted is currently mid-2015. That's when the new standard will be produced and at that point in time those who have an accredited certificate will need to transition to the, the new standards requirements. It's currently anticipated that there will be up to a three-year period within which you have to meet all of the new requirements in the revised standard, but that will be confirmed near the time. I do hope you found this update to be useful. Um, we're certainly looking forward to seeing how organisations are going to integrate the new requirements into their core organisation processes and deliver improved environmental performance. Thank you.